Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena game the video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck nicknamed Wedding Crashers. It's a red-green trample tribal aggro deck featuring Quartzwood Crasher from Ikoria, a 5-mana 6-6 six, six dinosaur beast with trample, saying whenever one or more creatures you control with trample deal combat damage to a player, create an XX green dinosaur beast creature token with trample, where X is the amount of damage is those creatures dealt to that player. So we only get to one trample dinosaur or beast token, even if multiple trample creatures deal damage, but we do get to add up the total damage to then uh, make an even bigger dinosaur beast. So the Quartzwood Crasher makes for an excellent curve topper in this deck that already wants to be playing a bunch of trample creatures, and to make sure we can connect with our Quartzwood Crasher or other trample creatures, we're also playing the full play set of Rhythm of the Wild as a 3-man enchantment, saying creature spells we control cannot be countered, and non-token creatures we control have a riot, meaning we can choose whether they enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter or with haste, so we can potentially attack with a hasty Quartzwood Crasher to make sure we get that uh, trample token right away. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, at one mana we've got the full playset of Pelt Collector as a great one drop in any aggressive green deck, and after it picks up a couple plus one plus one counters it will also eventually gain Trample. Then we've got the full playset of Crunch Wrangler as well, as a reasonable 2-drop in this deck, as a 2-mana two 2-1 two with Trample that says whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters a battlefield under our control, put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Crunch Wrangler. So it's pretty similar to the Pelt Collector, but can potentially keep growing even once we uh, get to a very large Wrangler and can only make creatures that are smaller than it, as long as they have 4 power. Then we've got a full playset of Paradise Druid to give us a little bit of ramp, maybe play that Quartzwood Crasher a turn ahead of schedule, and still a two-powered creature to uh, grow the Pelt Collector. Then one of our few interactive spells in the deck is Ram Through as a two-mana instant, saying target creature we control deals damage equal to its power to target creature we don't control. If the creature we control has Trample, excess damage is dealt to that creature's controller instead. So it has some advantages and disadvantages over cards like Domri's Ambush, which of course can also go after Planeswalkers and put say plus one plus one counter on the creature instead. But with so many Trample creatures in the deck, a Ram Through can sometimes be a two-mana Lava Axe plus a removal spell all in one card, which of course can be very effective. So I've been pretty happy with the Ram Through as a removal spell. It does have some drawbacks in that if you're kind of behind on board and don't have a big creature in play already, it's not going to do much, but the same is true for Domri's Ambush. But of course, uh, a card like Bonecrusher Giant could still be useful if you're behind on board and just need to get rid of some stuff. But uh, I've been pretty happy with Ram Through as both a relatively cheap removal spell and also just a finisher in the late game. And then we also have two copies of a Voracious Hydra as X and Double Green for a Trample Hydra that enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. And then we can choose to have it fight an opposing creature or double its plus one plus one counters. It's also just a nice removal spell that pairs nicely with our Quartzwood Crasher. Then moving up the curve, we also have the full playset of Gruul Spellbreaker as another staple of any Gruul aggro decks as a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three with a Riot and Trample. And as long as it's our turn, we have Hexproof as well as the Gruul Spellbreaker. And uh, Riot does stack, so if we have a Rhythm of the Wild in play and play Gruul Spellbreaker, we can choose to have it enter the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter and haste. If we have multiple copies of Rhythm of the Wild, we can choose to add multiple plus one plus one counters, so it's not a bad thing to have more than one copy of Rhythm in play. And then at four mana, we've got the full playset of Shifting Ceratops as a four mana 5 4 dinosaur that cannot be countered, protection from blue, and for one green mana, we can. Uh, give the Ceratops a bunch of abilities between Reach, Trample or Haste, so also gets the uh, Trample ability to combo with our Quartzwood Crasher. And Protection from Blue is a very relevant ability these days, cannot be bounced by Teferi, cannot be blocked by Giruda, cannot be stolen by Agent of Treachery, for example. And then we also have a fun of copy of Proud Wild Bonder as a 4 mana 4 3 human warrior with trample, saying creatures we control with trample have. You may have this creature assign its combat damage as though it weren't blocked. So all of a sudden our trample creatures gain super trample and can just uh, go straight to the opponent's life total, which can be a very nice ability to close out the game if there's a bit of a board stall, especially against those Giruda decks. So I've definitely stolen some games with the Wild Bonder's ability. And then we have another fun off here at 5 mana with Ilhark the Race Boar. Great combo with Rhythm of the Wild, being able to give Ilhark haste and then sneak a Quartzwood Crasher into play. 
because uh, when Ilharg attacks, we may put a creature card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking, and return that creature to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. And then Ilharg, being a boar god, also has the ability from the War of the Spark gods, where if it uh, dies or gets exiled, we may put it on our library third from the top. And then we've got our full playset of Quartz with Crasher, which of course is the all-star of the deck. And then the mana base, we've got uh, six basic mountains, six basic forests, two castle Garenbrick, which is not a necessity, but it can be nice, especially with Voracious Hydra. And then we've got four stomping grounds, four Temple of Abandon, and then two Bonders Enclave as another new addition from Ikoria, as a nice uh, mana sink if the game stalls out in a more grindy matchup to help us draw some extra cards. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play. Facing a Kahira deck. This hand seems a little too slow, not doing anything until turn 4 is not really acceptable. This is a little better, do need to draw some lands. What do I get rid of? I guess the Kahira deck could be like Teamer Elementals, in which case protection from blue is still relevant. Definitely want to keep Wrangler. Might get rid of Wild Bonder, even though it can be nice. And they do indeed appear to be Teamer. So get to play Rhythm this turn and then hope to draw a land for Ceratops. Thrashing Brontodon could mess with our Rhythm, but not before we play a creature. If I play Hydra for two, even with the plus one plus one counter, it's not enough to kill the Brontodon. So let's just play Ceratops, and then tempted to just give it haste to get in for five, even though the plus one counter will last forever. Don't think there's any four damage removal I need to be too worried about. Domri's Ambush. Talk about getting punished for not uh, putting a plus one plus one counter on it. And they're gonna blow up their rhythm. Alright, still just a 2 for 2 at the end of the day. And I'm just gonna make a big Hydra. Sadly, it doesn't grow the Crunch Wrangler since it doesn't enter the battlefield as a 6 power creature. Right, questing Beasts, normally pretty annoying because of Death Touch, but now I just get to ram through and still uh, deal a bit of extra damage. Seems uh, like the play here. And attack for lethal. All right, sweet. On to the next one. We're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. Could be cycling, could be sacrifice. Hand seems fine. Turn on Pelt Collector, always nice to start with. So Steam Vents probably points towards a Jeskai cycling deck. Next turn, probably play Temple. Don't need more lands at this point. Ooh, Ceratops gets past the 1-1 one, one, uh, fairy tokens. Yeah, I guess I'll take another Ceratops. Next turn I can play Rhythm. 
maybe keeping the Ceratops is a little greedy since I do need an untapped fourth land to play Ceratops in the first place. Could also play Spellbreaker, grow the Pelt Collector and attack with it. I think I'm still gonna play the Rhythm. And then if I don't hit an untapped land, I can just Spellbreaker next turn. Double Improbable Alliance, so the Ceratops is going to be pretty important this game. Take three. Alright, drew another Ceratops. I'll keep a land, although Stomping Grounds is a little painful here. The two damage could definitely matter. But it would allow me to play Ceratops and then put a counter on it with the Rhythm and then give it haste. I think I would rather dig for an untapped land or some other spells. That uh, doesn't cost me any life. And then can make a hasty 4-4 and then maybe keep Pelt Collector on defense to block Stinger. Next turn I'll have a hasty Ceratops attacking. It's gonna be close. The ram through could also maybe deal the finishing blow. I'll trade. Word eights. Bone falls to six. All right, if they have a zenith flare, we're probably dead. Alright, we're on the draw, up against a Lurus deck. This hand's pretty unexciting without any big creatures to grow the Wranglers. But I think I still keep... I've got the Paradise Root for Ramp, so if we do find any of our uh, more expensive creatures, we'll be in good shape. Yeah, I guess I'll take a Voracious Hydra. Not the best combo with the Wrangler, given that it's not guaranteed to uh, put a plus one plus one counter on it when we double the counters. Just gonna go Paradise through it into double Crunch Wrangler here. Put in playing Opts in what appears to be a Jeskai uh, Lurus deck. So not quite sure what to make of it. I see Sprite Dragon can take that out with a ramp through before it gets too big, or just a Voracious Hydra, I guess, works too. But I do have this Castle Garenbrick, so I might be able to play a bigger Hydra later. So how about we just Wrangler plus ramp through? And I get to trample over for one here. And then maybe keep the Hydra out to kill Lurus. Ceratops could be good too. So I could use the castle for a pretty big Hydra. I 
get in for three. And next turn I can have a hasty Ceratops attacking. Carmetra's blessing the Wrangler. All right, so I guess our opponent's just giving up. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Turn two Paradise Druid, turn three Spellbreaker, hopefully turn four Crasher. Don't think I want to keep Pelt Collector anymore. Really looking for land four. Facing Healer's Hawk, so maybe a life gain deck. If I kept the Pelt Collector, I would have had the option of Pelt Collector into Spellbreaker this turn. But uh, still want to put a priority on finding land for, for the Quartzwood Crasher. Alright, so it might be a Blue-White Flyer's deck instead, or just Mono-White Aggro, although that doesn't explain the Fabled Passage. Still gets the planes. There's land uh, four. So I could attack for two with the Paradise Druid and take two from Stomping Ground, but when we have the Crasher, we're just going to win by such a wide margin that I don't need to necessarily try and trade two for two. So we'll just uh, play Spellbreaker like this. And I'll go with the counter. It's a little bit better once we play the Crasher next turn. So blue-white flyers confirmed. They do have the turn 3 eagle. Might have to take a turn off killing that with my ram through, otherwise I might be dead to a rally of wings. I guess that makes sense, although I'm really tempted to play crasher. So let's say they have rally, I have to take 2 down to 12. I would be taking 7 plus 6, so yeah, I would be dead. Can't really have that happen. So I guess ram through it is. And then I'll just play this. And then next turn I can hopefully play Crasher. Hanged Executioner, that's fine. And a Healer Sock, well... A Rally is looking pretty scary now. So if I play Crasher, attack... I'll be hitting them for 7. And how much are we taking on the way back? Definitely more than lethal, but playing the Ceratops and keeping up a reach would save me if they have Empyrean Eagle instead of a Rally of Wings next turn. But from the way they've been playing, it feels like they have a Rally of Wings in hand, in which case we're dead no matter what. Alright, and there it is. It's too bad. On to the next one. On the draw, facing another Lurus deck. Sure, I mean, this hand's fine. This appears to be the Red Black Sacrifice variants. We are seeing a lot of Lurus decks, but at least they're a little different from each other. Priest is scary. Next turn I have the option of playing Rhythm or maybe using the Ram through. 
who claimed the firstborn, so we're gonna lose our entire board here. Well, now ram through is not really an option. Next turn I can play Wrangler and maybe take out the Priest, although Lurus can just get it back the turn after. Opponent appears to be Junt. Maybe playing the uh, Innkeeper for some adventure synergy. I can't really take out the Priest now because they would be able to Make me sacrifice Wrangle in a response. So I'll probably just pass here and see what happens. Alright, now I can ram through. And a Black Lance Paragon using that two floating mana. Down to six. And there's Innkeeper we suspected. So yeah, we're super far behind this game. That uh, claim the Firstborn definitely uh, put us very far behind. Can play Hasty Ilharg, but don't have anything to sneak into play. If we had a Crasher in hand, then maybe we stand a chance here. As is, I can't even attack with the uh, Ilharg. Order of Midnight draws a card. Swordmaster puts me to three, so I should just be dead on board here. Double Swordmaster even. Alright, opponent had a pretty cool Jund Adventure deck, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Kahira deck. Got a fine hand. Pelt Collector into Druid into Spellbreaker, maybe even a turn for Ilharg. Let's see if our opponent can break serve. And then we would love to pick up uh, Quartzwood Crasher to sneak into play with Ilharg. I'll go with Hastes. Could take out uh, Paradise Root now, so that would slow down Ilharg, but Poon goes for Kahira instead. I guess I'm sold on playing Rhythm, and then next turn we get to have a hasty Ilharg instead. And look for another big creature to put in play, Spellbreaker will do. So this will be a 5-5 thanks to double riots. Opponent with a double fire's turn. Bam. All right, sweet. The one of Ilharak putting in some work onto the next one. On the draw, facing an Obosh deck. Um, hands not amazing, but probably still keepable. So this could be the mono black aggro variant. Don't really want to shock myself to play Pelt Collector that doesn't block. Although next turn I'll be able to then uh, have a 2-2 in play. 
maybe it is worth it. Although I also want to make sure I play this temple out. Let's just play temple for now. Hydra should be okay. Although I kind of want lands too. I'll keep Hydra. And then next turn I can play Paradise Druids. So they are on the red black. Probably uh, sacrifice then with Mayhem Devils. Opponent can get another Whisper Squad. Next turn I have the option of maybe going Rhythm into a 2-2 Pelt Collector. Opponent stuck on two lanes, gives us a chance here. Shock takes out Paradise Roots. I guess I'm down to play another Rhythm. Line 3. And a Phoenix of Ash. Alright, that's unexpected. A Ram Throw is looking good too. So I can play a 3-powered Hydra, put a counter on it, make it 4, and give it haste. Although, I guess then if I take out the Phoenix with a fight, they could triple block to kill this still, is that right? Yeah, I would have 5 toughness. So then, um, yeah, the triple block would kill it, but do we care? Could also just play Crunch Wrangler here. Which isn't bad, and then maybe ram through. Let's do that instead. So plus one counter and hastes. And then probably just attack with the uh, pelt collector. And if they triple block, I can ram through with a wrangler. So that wasn't a bad exchange. Next turn the Hydra can take out Phoenix. More Scorpions. Might be able to burn us out with those. So play Hydra pre-combots. And then can we give it haste? I think so. And then it will still grow both creatures, if it's a 4-power creature here. They might have a shock in hand to finish off the Hydra. at five. Maybe thinking of escaping the Phoenix, but then it would be that to Spellbreaker here, if they attack that is. Alright, opponent's going for it, but yeah, they're dead to any creature, and luckily for us we have it. Haste, counter, counter. Gonna grow the Pelt Collector and the Wrangler, attack for uh, 19 damage, not bad. On to the next one. Alright, so we're on the draw, and uh, 
I guess we can keep this. Temple to look for a third land, Paradise Root into Rhythm, and then we've got some uh, nice creatures to curve into. I'll keep another mountain. Maybe this could be a uh, song deck, considering they're not playing a companion. Ooh, Glinthorn Buccaneer. So yeah, definitely looks like a song deck. Take two. Well, we'll just play Rhythm and then next turn I can crash her. Opponent could be playing cards like Bonecrusher Giant to take out Paradise Root, so I don't think it's worth to get two damage in when we're guaranteed to play Crasher otherwise. Beanstalk Giant to ramp. So yeah, our opponent's deck is going to try and play Song of Creation, draw a million cards, and then discard them with Buccaneer to then deal a ton of damage to us. Brazen Borrower bounces Rhythm, sadly. Do I still want to replay Rhythm? I guess so, I get to go Rhythm plus Wrangler. And then I'll go with a counter. Bonecrusher takes out Wrangler, but now can maybe still play the Crasher. Got another Brazen Borrower. All right, that's annoying. So hoping for a land so we can go Rhythm into something else. Although on the bright side our opponent hasn't found their Song of Creation yet. Can we finally play our Crasher with haste next turn? Let's find out. If they have a land they could play a 7-7 Beanstalk Giant, which I guess would just uh, trade for it. It's gonna be Bone Crusher into Brazen Borrower instead. Alright, so we've got a pretty nice window here. So it's just gonna be Crasher with hastes. So, if I send in the Druid 2, they could eat it with the Giant, take 10, we get to make a 10-10 token. How do we lose? If I keep the Paradise Root back, they could trade for Spellbreaker, take 6, we get to make a 6-6 six, six token, and then Paradise Root could block Buccaneer. Maybe that's safer. Because if I attack with everyone, they block Paradise Root. I make a token, but then they find another Brazen Borrower bounce it. Let's see how much damage are we taking. Six, nine, and then this could be activated twice, so I could be dead. Uh, let's play it safe. Still get to trample for seven and make a seven, seven token. There's a Song of Creation. But our opponents pretty much uh, tapped out. And I don't think they're surviving another turn. Take two from the Buccaneer. And Ram through is a pretty nice finisher here. GG's. Don't even need to attack. Uh, 
Alright, so in conclusion, we didn't see a ton of the Quartz with Crasher in action, but it does make for a pretty nice curve topper, especially if we can play it with haste or play it on turn 4 thanks to the Paradise Druid. If we just play it on turn 5, then it can feel a little bit too slow to get it going, and the opponent will have plenty of time to answer it otherwise. So I do think Rhythm is a pretty important addition in the deck. But uh, once we're playing Rhythm, we want to make sure that all the spells we play after Rhythm are creatures, so they pick up value from our enchantment, so we don't really have room for cards like Embercleave anymore, because otherwise we start having too many non-creature spells in the deck and not enough creatures to enable them. At the end of the day, the deck might just be a worse version of the more traditional Gruul aggro deck featuring Questing Beast and Embercleave, but nevertheless a fun version to try out. Another card that we could potentially play around with in this deck is the Marauding Raptor, since we have both the Shifting Ceratops and the Quartzwood Crasher that are both dinosaurs, and of course the mana discount on creatures is very relevant. But of course, once we play the Marauding Raptor, cards like uh, the Crunch Wrangler don't really have room in the deck anymore. Paradise Druid probably needs to be replaced with a 3 toughness mana creature, and the uh, Pelt Collector also gets uh, pretty awkward if we draw it later. So there's definitely some drawbacks with the Marauding Raptor as well, but it might also open up once we replace the Crunch Wrangler with Marauding Raptor to find more room for potential mutate cards like the. Uh, 3 mana one that we can mutate and uh, destroy an artifact or enchantment, the gem raiser, or maybe the Everquill Phoenix, which also plays well with plus one plus one counters. So there's potentially another Gruul variant that we could try later, still featuring the Quartz with Crasher that has more of a mutate uh, sub theme as well. So that's going to be it for me today. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.